In this problem, we're told to use the method of cylindrical shelves to find the volume generated by rotating the region bounded by the given curves about the y-axis. And so this is number four, and we're told that y equals x cubed, y equals zero, x equals one, and x equals two. So generally, I start these problems by graphing what we're given. So here's going to be our graph. And if we graph y equals x cubed, uh, it's going to look something uh, like this. It's going to go up and then around like this. Uh, it's not really that accurate of a drawing uh, it's more it's a bit thinner like this it's kind of like that and so what we want to do is graph the other lines though too and so we're gonna graph y equals 0 which is just the x-axis so there's not really anything to draw there but let's graph x equals 1 and x equals 2 so if this is x equals 1 this drawing isn't that good but just use it as a base and then this is x equals 2 right so these are gonna be our lines and you can tell that this is gonna be our region here and so what we're trying to do is rotate it around the y-axis. So it says about the y-axis, so we're rotating around this. And so you should know that the formula for solving cylindrical shells, or the volume through this method, is going to be v equals 2 pi times the integral from a to b of your radius times your height, and then dx or whatever. Uh, in this case, we're using x variables because we're rotating around something vertical. If you rotate around something vertical, you use x values. If you're rotating around something horizontal, you use y. So keep that in mind. That's something really important for solving these. And so v is going to be equal to 2 pi. And then what's a and b going to be? So our upper and lower bounds of our curve. So imagine it. Uh, in this case, they tell you x equals 1, x equals 2, which are going to be our upper and lower bounds. And so they're basically just the x values that intersect uh, our two functions, which in this case is x cubed or y equals 0. But they don't, this isn't, they don't intersect that way in this one because they just give it to you. Sometimes they'll give it to you like this. They'll say x equals this and x equals this, or they might just give you one. But in this case, they give us both. But usually, they'll just give you two functions, and you want to find the x values where they intersect, and that's going to be your a and b, as long as you're rotating around something vertically. If it's horizontally, you choose the y values. But in this case, we're just given to them x equals 1, x equals 2, so upper and lower bounds. So what's your radius going to be, though? So your radius is just going to be, if you're rotating around the y-axis, in this case, like we are, it's always going to be x. Always going to be x if you're doing around the y-axis. If you're doing around something else vertically, it's going to be different. If you're doing around the x-axis, it's going to be uh, always y. Uh, and if you're doing something else horizontally, it'll be different. But just keep that in mind. If you're doing the y-axis, uh, it's always going to be x. And then what is your height going to be? So your height, essentially just imagine you're trying to find the area between these two curves. And so your height is going to be your upper curve minus your lower curve. So you can tell in this case our upper curve is x cubed and our lower curve is just the y-axis, right? So generally what you do is you take your top curve minus your bottom one. And so in this case, our top one uh, is going to be uh, x cubed. So our top one's x cubed, you minus your lower one. But sometimes if you can't graph it and you want to know which one's on top, just pick a number throughout your region or between your upper and lower bounds and plug it in. And those are going to be... Uh, and whatever one is greater, whichever function is greater, is going to be the one that's on top. So like if we plug in 1 into this, or just 1.5, 1.5 cubed is going to be greater than 0, right? It's an actual number. So you just want to take your top one minus your bottom one, and then multiply it by dx like we have here. And so this right here is going to be your integral set up for solving this problem. And so I'm not going to walk you through how to solve it, because hopefully by now you're pretty proficient at solving these. But uh, yeah. The volume is going to be, though, 62 pi over 5. So this is going to be your answer. But uh, yeah, that's uh, how you set up this integral for this problem. And uh, hopefully you found it useful.